Now this is interesting, I don't get to cover much in the way of microphones on this channel, but I'm hoping this can be a start. Mauno reached out to me for an unboxing and review of their new GamerWave DGM20 microphone. Let's get it unboxed and see what's my first impression of it. Let's go. But before we continue with the video, let's keep the lights on here in the studio. This video is brought to you by Sneak Attack Design Lab. They're a clothing company that specializes in technical fashion, more commonly known as techwear, and you can see me in their clothes in most of my videos. I've been supporting their brand ever since I met them back in 2019, and now they're returning the favor. Head on over to this link, you can find it in the description as well, to get 10% off your order from their site. Check their clothes out, you're bound to see something badass over there that'll look great on you. Thank you very much to Sneak Attack for this exclusive promo for my viewers. Now, back to the video. So inside this box is the Mauno GamerWave DGM20 gaming USB microphone with noise cancelling. Mauno, as I'm told, is a Swahili word that means vision. And they named themselves that because they believe that they are the vision that drives technology forward. Alright, very interesting. As we can see, it's a pretty modernly designed box. At the front, we can see the product photo, and I don't know about you guys, but it looks pretty similar to my JBL Quantum Stream, just with a built-in pop filter and stand, and RGB through the grills. At the back, we can see a few more details about the Mano GamerWave DGM20. I apparently got the white version, and features include noise cancellation, real-time monitoring, gain control, controllable RGB lights, one-button mute, and an integrated shock mount and pop filter. On one of the sides, we can see the labeled parts of the microphone. This is pretty neat to see. And on the other side, we can see a little bit of background info about Mano and the GamerWave DGM20 product. Alright, that's everything about the box. Let's get it opened. Upon opening up the box, we can immediately see that the mic was shipped inside of a closed cell foam mold. This is great, as it offers great protection against bumps during shipping. Then we can see the mic itself, already assembled, with an additional accessories box. Let's take both out and see what's inside the accessories box first. Inside, we can see a little packet of delicious silica gel the white USB-C to USB-C cable that has an integrated USB-A adapter on one end, a mic stand adapter if you don't want to use the integrated desk stand, and as is our reflex to ignore the user manual for now. Taking out the mic, we can see that it's in a beautiful shade of flat white, very close to eggshell. The microphone capsule is pretty small for a cardioid mic, but that's no issue. Everything is primarily made of plastic except the grill on the mic itself and on the pop filter. Those are made of a light metal that's painted black. Do note that the pop filter is removable. You just need to tug on it like so to remove it. And if you want to reattach it, you just slot it into these rails from the top. The shock mount is integrated into the body by way of four loops at the side of the DGM20 capsule itself. Then a thick rubber o-ring is looped around to the frame of the shock mount at four different points. This is a pretty good mounting solution. The frame of the shock mount connects to the stand via a plastic wing nut. This is where you can disconnect the desk stand from the shock mount frame and replace it with a mic stand mount. The desk stand is almost entirely made from plastic, save for some rubber inserts down here at the bottom to give it some grip to the desk, and a metal weight to keep it anchored down. Now that's the entire build. Let's focus on over to the DGM20 capsule. Let's get it plugged in to see how it looks when it's lit up, and note that after this sentence, my voiceover will be recorded through the Mauno GamerWave DGM20, so you can start hearing what it sounds like. Alright, recording now with the DGM20. Please note that there is no processing on this, and this is just the raw recording out of the mic, with just a very minor volume adjustment so it would be level with the rest of the voiceover for this video. Alright, let's talk about the features of the mic. Like with the rest of the body, it's entirely made of plastic, and here at the top, we can see that there are capacitive buttons to control the functions of the mic. Here on the top left side, there is a capacitive button to control the lighting. By default, it's on a rainbow gradient scroll, but pressing it shows different RGB patterns. We have a breathing effect that also changes the gradient of the RGB, then if you keep pressing the button, you'll scroll through solid Groijibiv colors. Lighting is pretty bright and consistent. I like it. On the right side of the top, we can see a dual function button. Pressing it once will mute the mic, its status denoted by the changing of the status LED on the front from green to red. 
However, holding down the button will activate the built-in noise cancelling feature. Activation of this feature is denoted by the changing of the status LED on the front from green to blue. I will activate it right now so you can hear how it sounds, and I will keep it on for the rest of the voiceover for this segment. Moving on down to the bottom of the DGM20 capsule, we see that there's a 3.5mm audio jack. Do note that this is not only for monitoring the mic in real time, but when you plug in the Mono Gamer Wave DGM20 into your Windows or Mac machine, it's also going to act as a sound card, so you can set it as your audio output and you will hear your desktop audio through its 3.5mm audio jack. Last thing to note is the bottom of the DGM20. It's a huge volume knob with a large throw distance. I love this because it gives you a lot of volume control granularity, allowing you to set the volume as high or low as you need. It does sacrifice the ability of having a direct mount here at the bottom of the mic, but it does have the integrated shock mount, so I think that's a worthwhile creative function. Alright, you've heard the Mano Gamer Wave DGM20 in a voiceover setting with both noise cancelling off and on. Now it's time to have some fun with it. Let's use it to record some acoustic music. What's that phrase you use when seeing if a mic is working? Maybe it would be fun to get a new opinion work done and forget maybe it would be cool if a rocket old cool try to break a gold room and a sweat better than the first time better than the worst time if I could reverse time I'd be set testing one two three Anybody hear me if I should be irony? Would anybody cheer me if I acted less like me? Would I be in the clear she got a new apartment? Alright, I turned noise cancelling off. Okay, first impressions time. I'm pretty impressed with the quality of this little mic. It sounds clear, it's built really well for the price, and it's got some killer looks. It'll definitely be a great addition to my secondary desk, right next to my Womir K66 and ROG Ally. Great, now I feel like I have to complete this set by finding a way to turn my laptop, monitor, and mouse to an all-white color. So that's the Mano Gamer Rave DGM20. If you want to buy one for yourselves, I've added links to the description, along with the official Mano product page for it. There's regular sales on their Shopee and Lazada stores, and I've even added a link to their Amazon listing for it. If you have any questions about this mic, please leave them down in the description below and I'll do my best to answer them. That's it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.